well, I'll go through this in a minute, but it's full of rocks, it's deep roots, there's large stumps that stop us in our tracks, and we're really plowing unfertile ground. You know, our, our burdens are compounding on us, our plow's getting bogged down with all this stuff wrapped around the points, the roots, the briars, and everything. So I want everybody to try something with me real quick. I want you to, to close your eyes, and I want you to... I want you to picture something. I don't know where my clicker went, but I got a picture that'll help you. You see that picture there of the the horse and the plow? All right, I want you to close your eyes and I want you to imagine something with me. Just just bear with me. So you picture this horse-drawn plow and you're in front and you're wearing the harness. You got this collar around your neck and the collar's hooked around your shoulders and now you're you're bound by chains to this plow. And you're pulling as hard as you can through life. I mean, as hard as you can to make your way. But you can only see what's directly in front of you because of the blinders that, are, that you have on, just like this horse has on. You can't see how tangled up your plow is with snags and roots and briars. You don't understand why when things happen in your life, it stops you in your tracks. And then there's the devil with the smile on his face who's driving your plow. He's lifting up on the handles and just sinking the plow deeper and deeper into the ground, ultimately shorting, shortening the distance of your, fur, your furlong because he knows that you can only pull so far before you give up and tire out. He's shortening your life. You can open your eyes. You know, we don't have to do that because Jesus has already plowed the field for us. He's already plowed a big enough field for everybody. We don't have to plow a field. In Hosea 10, 12, it says, Sow for yourselves righteousness, reap in mercy, break up your fallow ground, for it's time to seek the Lord, till he comes and rains righteousness on you. You have plowed wickedness. You have reaped iniquity. You have eaten the fruit of lies because you trusted in your own way, in the multitude of the mighty men. See, this is the product of that laziness, that pride, that uncertainty, even distractions. Uh, That's another thing that could throw you off is a distraction. Uh, The rocks, the roots, the stumps, the, the stumbling blocks that are in your path. But I'm just thankful that Jesus said in Matthew chapter 11, verse 29, he said, Take my yoke upon you, learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you can find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. You see, Jesus wants to pull the plow for you. He wants to pull your plow. He's asking you to trade yokes with him. With Jesus in front of you and hooked to the plow, there is absolutely nothing that he can't uproot. As strong as Jesus is, he can pull your plow through whatever. He's stronger than any stumps that are in your way, any stones that are in your path. The scripture says, uh, Philippians 4.13 413 that I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. You know, with Jesus hooked to your plow, he's breaking that new ground, and all of those weeds and briars and things that were on the surface are now getting turned under, and there's fresh fertile ground turned up. And he's using all that death of your old life. See, all that stuff dies under the fertile ground, and it becomes fertilizer for the seeds that we sow. You know, he gives us a fresh new start. And he uses that death as a fertilizer. So I know that most of us are probably already saved. I don't know for sure. I believe that we are. But I want to tell you this, that the scripture that I used from Luke didn't apply to just the disciples. See, Jesus wasn't talking directly to the disciples. He was talking to other people who had come up. Uh, You know, he was addressing all of his followers when he was doing this speech And in the beginning of the next chapter, he sends 70 people into the surrounding cities to tell them about Jesus. He wants all of us to be like the disciples. I think I've said that before, that once we accept Christ as our Savior, we enter into a discipleship with him. Um, You know, when you're plowing like that, I don't, I don't think I told you that when you push down on the handles, the plow comes out of the ground. When you lift up on the handles, it goes down into the ground. So with Christ pulling your plow, and he can pull through anything, 
he really wants us to go ahead and lift up on those handles a little bit and drive that plow deep into the word. You know, we really should be studying more. We really should be doing more. There's so many things, especially now with this coronavirus thing, the hype and the hysteria. We have so many opportunities now to help those that are around about us. I mean, there's many that didn't even go to church this morning because their church is closed down. There are those that's not going to be able to go to the doctor's office. There's going to be those that, like us, we're going to have to find child care. Uh, with Leslie's mother in the hospital with her dad, there's my babysitter. So, I mean, we're it's a hardship on us too, but God's going to make a way for us. He's going to make a way for us. Uh, you know, with... With Jesus hooked to that plow, the only thing that we really need to do is focus on the point at the end of the field, isn't it? So what is that point at the end of the field? Well, that's heaven. That's God. That's heaven. So if we'll focus on God and then follow right behind Jesus with that plow, then we're going to make it. There's no point in us looking back. We can be certain in the steps that we take. We don't need to take pride in our work. Jesus is doing the work. We just need to follow him and focus at the end of the field. Don't look back. Because I'm going to be honest with you. We don't know how long our furlong is. We really don't. And, and, and I don't know how long each of us has been plowing. But I do know that the end of the field is near. Don't be uncertain when you're plowing. Don't be lazy. Don't have too much pride and don't get distracted. I don't know if you've been looking back or if you've been plowing crooked or I don't know. I don't even know who's pulling your plow. Only you know that. But I do hope that something was said this morning that will help you come harvest time. Because the end of the field is near. That's the message that I have for you this morning. And like I said, it's springtime. I can't help but think of planting a garden and all of that and turning the ground under and sowing seeds. So, Miss Christine, would you play something for us? Whatever you, whatever you want to play. But if you'll play us a, a little hymn in closing. And, um, and if all hearts and minds are free, if not, take this opportunity. If you want to... If you want to come up and you want me to pray for you, there's something going on in your life um, that you need some help with, just just let me know. I'll be more than happy to, to come and pray with you, pray for you, or whatever.